I heard this next story, Tia Miseria, for the first time from storyteller Olga Loya, and I immediately fell in love with it. The word Tia is Spanish for aunt, like aunt and uncle, and Miseria means misery. Misery is another word for when things are really lousy. That means her name was Aunt Lousy. Now, that's not the name she was given when she was born. It was a name given to her by these little brats in town. When I tell the story, I use both Spanish and English. Here now, the story of Tia Miseria. Había una vez una vieja mujer que se llamaba Tía Miseria. Long ago, there was an old woman, and her name was Tía Miseria. Oh, Tía Miseria, she was such a sweet woman. Era una mujer muy amable. She had her little vegetable garden, her jardín de verduras. <laughs> she had her little chickens, her little pollitos, and she'd say, oh, mis pollitos! And her chickens, they would go like this. And she'd say, oh, mis pollitos. But her favorite thing was her pear tree, her arbol de peras. Oh, she loved those pears. And whenever they were ripe, she would grab one, and she'd marvel at it, and she'd go like this. Mm. Take a bite out of it. Mmm, que deliciosa. Mmm, delicious. Mm. Oh, que rica. She loved those pears. But somebody else in town loved those pears. These brats, these little niños traviesos. <laughs> this is what they would do. Those little brats, they would jump over the stone wall, climb up the pear tree, grab a pear, take a bite out of it, throw it at the chickens, yeah, take another pair, take only one bite out of it, waste the rest of it, throw it at Tia Miseria. Stick out their tongues and they go like this. <laughs> and then they go, Tia, Tia, Tia Miseria. Can y'all do that with me right now? Tia, Tia, Tia Miseria. Oh, Tia Miseria, she gets so angry and she'd run up to the tree and she'd say, Bajen, bajen, bajen de mi árbol. Which means come down, come down, come down from my tree, and they would just keep going like this, tia, 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 miseria. And when she wasn't looking, they'd jump out of the tree, and they'd run away laughing, going, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Well, one day, there was a knock at tia miseria's door. Now, for this knock, it's our knuckle. It hits the door, and you go like this. Ready? Wait for the knuckle, though. Oh, hello. It was this old man, un viejo. And he said, oh, tia miseria. Tengo hambre, I'm so hungry. Could I have something to eat? She said, yes, yes, come in, come in, sit down, siéntense. Told you she was nice. And she went and she got him some arroz, which in English is? She went and she got him some frijoles, which in English is? She went and she got him some tortillas, which in English is? Yeah, very good. <laughs> Tortillas. <laughs> and he made a taco, cebolla, some onions, cilantro, chiles. Mm. <laughs> and when he finished, he said, Dear Miseria, you have been good to me. I'm going to be good to you. Soy un mago. Yeah, I'm a magician. Any wish you want, un deseo, I'll give it to you. She said, a wish, a wish, a wish, un deseo. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. I know what I want. I want silver, plata. No, 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 no. I know what I want. I want gold, oro. No, 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 no. I know what I want. I have this pear tree. 
These little brats are always climbing up it. They won't come down when I want them to. I want you to put a spell on that pear tree that anybody who climbs up it cannot come down until I say the magic words. Las palabras mágicas. And the magic words will be, bajen, bajen, bajen de mi árbol. <laughs> Done. Well, the next day, who came back? Oh. Yeah, little brats. They jumped over the stone wall. They climbed up the pear tree. They grabbed a pear, threw it at the chickens. Threw it to Miseria. Tia, 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 Miseria. But this day, Tia Miseria just stood on the porch, sipping her coffee and smiling to the boys. <laughs> tia, 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 Miseria. No se enoja. ¿Qué le pasa? She's not getting mad. And if she's not getting mad, maybe it means she's up to something. And it's no fun to pick on somebody if they don't get mad. <laughs> Let's just get out of here. And they tried to get out of the tree. Tia Miseria, we're stuck. Please help us out of the tree. And Tia Miseria very calmly put down her cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. I'll let you boys down if you promise me one thing. Promise me never to come back here again. Nunca jamás por aquí. I promise. Yeah, we promise. And she said the magic words. Bajen, bajen, bajen de mi árbol. <laughs> the kids came out of the tree, jumped over the stone wall, and dis, uh... <sighs> you know what? They never bothered her. Okay. But Tia Miseri was an old woman. And what happens to people when they become old? They finally die. And one day, there was a knock at the door. Get ready for the knock, everyone. Nice. She opened up the door. <gasps> Ooh. There was death. La muerte. Death. The grim reaper. Some cultures say that when it's your time to die, the grim reaper, this tall skeleton wearing a robe and carrying a scythe, a stick with a long blade on it, comes to your door, and he said this to Tia Miseria. Se la hora which in English means die. time to die. <laughs> oh, well, time to die. <laughs> so she followed death out the door, and she passed by her vegetable garden. Bye-bye, broccoli. broccoli. I like broccoli. <laughs> she passed by her chickens. Oh, bye-bye, mis pollitos. And you know, chickens, they never know if anything's changed. They just kept going, okay. Kind of like broccoli. <laughs> and then she passed by her, her audible de peras, and she said, oh, my pears. Hey, death. Death, 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 wait, death. Let's get some pears for the trip. <laughs> Dia miseria. And he pulled out a long scroll with all these names on it. Look, I've got a lot of people to pick up today. Oh, look here. Storyteller Michael Katz. <laughs> oh, he's got another story to tell. He can wait. Let's get some pears. All right, all right, go ahead. Get some pears. Oh, no, no, no. Soy vieja. I'm too old to climb up the tree. Tu sube. You climb up the tree. All right.
Tiramisaria, let me out of this tree. No. <laughs> so she left death up there for an hour, a day, a week, a month, a year. Well, with death stuck up in the tree, that means nobody's going to die. Con la muerte atorada en el árbol, nadie moría. It's good news, right? Yeah. Not actually for everybody. Because <laughs> one day there was a knock at her door. Get ready. And when she opened up the door, there was her oldest friend, su más vieja amiga. Oh, this old woman, Tia Miseria, knew her her whole life. She was the sweetest woman. And the old woman said, Oh, Tia Miseria, my body, it hurts all over. Really, it's time for me to die. Please let death down from the tree. And Tia Miseria's heart opened up to her old friend and said, for you, I will let death down. Death! Hey, Death! I'm going to let you down, but you have to promise me one thing. Never come back for me. I promise. And Tia Miseria said the magic words. Bajen, bajen, bajen de mi árbol. Death came down from the tree, picked up Tia Miseria's old friend, and disa. Uh... Now, you know what they say in Mexico? What, what? They say that Death has kept his promise. And because of that, we're stuck with misery here on Earth. But kids and grown-ups, keep your eyes out for misery. We know how enticing misery and staying in our misery can be. Don't be like the boys. Don't be like death. Don't let yourself get stuck up in misery's tree. Because we all know misery loves company. <laughs> and that's the story of Tia Miseria. From Mexico, let's come home to the United States and a black American folk tale from the South called Wiley and the Hairy Man. I've heard many versions of this story and they've all helped shape the way I tell it today. So now for you, Wiley and the Hairy Man. Once there was a boy named Wiley. <laughs> Wiley lived with his mother. Wiley thought his mother was the best person on earth. He thought she was the prettiest person. <laughs> the nicest person. The bravest person. The smartest person. And she was a conjurer. That meant she knew magic. And each year that Wiley grew up, his mother taught him some new magic. Now, Wiley had one job, and that was every night he'd go out into his woods with his three dogs and his ax, and he'd go out and chop up firewood for the fire. Now, Wiley's dogs had very peculiar names. The first dog was named Barney McCabe. Second dog, Doodly Doo. Third dog, Sue Boy. And Wiley always took these dogs with him in case he ran into the hairy man. Now, the hairy man was covered from head to toe with hair. Yeah, that's why he's called the hairy man. <laughs> he didn't have feet like you and me. He had hooves like a cow. And for his eyes, all he had were these two red beady dots. And what he would do is he'd hang out in the woods and wait for a little boy or girl to come walking by, and then he'd grab him take them with them, and never see them again. But the hairy man was scared of one thing, and that was? Dogs. So Wiley always took his dogs. dogs. So it's one night, Wiley tied up the dogs, had his ax, was going out into the woods. Mother said what she said every night. She said, now Wiley, remember, 
If the dogs run away from you, come back home. And Wiley, if you find a tree to chop, make sure you type the dogs to a tree real close to that one. You got that, Wiley? Okay, Mom. <laughs> so Wiley goes out into the woods when suddenly this little baby suckling pig goes running by and the pig goes like this. Wee, 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 wee. The dogs see the pig and the dogs go, Arr! Arr, 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 arr. Start running after the pig. Wiley's running with the dogs for as long as he can, but he can't keep up with the dogs, and finally the ropes tear out of his hand. Arr, arr, arr. <laughs> Ooh, Wiley wasn't laughing, because <laughs> Wiley was now all uh... alone. Should he go back home? Yeah. Yeah, that's what his mom said, right? But then he started thinking, you know what? I've been chopping wood for years. I've never seen the hairy man. I think it's just a story, the hairy man. Yeah, right. So Harry Man goes out, the Wiley, I mean, goes out to this tree and he starts chopping the tree. And when he chops the tree, it makes a very special sound. It goes like this. Wickety whack. <laughs> now I need you all to make that sound, but only when the axe hits the tree, okay? So watch very closely. Here we go. Nice. God, they are smart in Berkeley, aren't they? Beautiful. So keep up with me, but only when the axe hits a tree. Okay, here we go. When the axe hits a tree, okay? <laughs> axe, tree, hit. <laughs> Smart Alec. <laughs> he looks out in the woods, he sees these two red beady dots staring at him. It's the. Wiley takes the ax, throws it up in the air, and he climbs up the tree. And the hairy man comes walking up to the tree. <laughs> hey, Wiley, why don't you just come on down here? What do you think Wiley said? Uh-uh. <laughs> well, Wiley, I gotta find some way to get you. <laughs> some way to get you down. Looky here, an ax. I guess I'll just chop you down. So he picked up the ax and he started chopping at the tree. And what sound did it make, everybody? <laughs> Each time the ax hit the tree, wood chips would come flying out. Wiley could tell it was gonna take about three more chops and that tree was gonna fall down. He had to think of something fast. Well, his mother was teaching him magic. Maybe a magic spell would work. So he went like this. Wood chips fly. Wood chips fly. Go back into that tree. Can you say that with me, please? Wood chips fly. Wood chips fly. Go back into that tree. And sure enough, the wood chips, they froze in midair and went right back into the tree like this. Yeah. Harriman was getting nowhere but tired because each time he chopped at the tree, wickety whack, the wood chips would go right back in. Finally, he just put down the ax because he was so tired. And the hairy man decided to wait for a while to fall asleep and fall out of the tree. Wiley knew that's what the hairy man was doing. And he knew he couldn't stay up there all night, so he said, Hairy man, I know I can't stay up here all night. So I tell you what, if you let me say one last prayer, then I'll come on down. What do you say? The hairy man was so nasty, he didn't know anything about praying. He said, go on, pray, whatever that is. Wiley said, okay, Harry, man, <laughs> here's my prayer. <laughs> Hope you like it. <laughs> Goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Barney McCabe, Dooley Doo, and Sue Boy. Your master's calling you. He was calling for the dog. And from out of the woods, the dogs came in and they went like this. Arr, 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 right up to the hairy man. The hairy man went like this. Whoa! And he hightailed in the woods. <laughs> Wiley jumped down from the tree, ran home, and he told his mother everything that happened. Oh, mom, 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 little pig went, what are you doing? That's a weird, what's your life? What's your life? What's your life? Oh, everybody, get the next on you and ran away home. <laughs> his mom said, that's wonderful, Wiley. You've tricked the hairy man. You know, they say that if you trick the hairy man, 
three times, he'll never bother you again. again. Now, Wiley, remember what I say. If the dogs run away from you, come back oh. home. And Wiley, if you find a tree to chop, make sure you type a dogs to the tree real close to that one. You got that, Wiley? Wiley said, okay, Mom. <laughs> so Wiley goes back into the woods, and he finds a tree, but it's really far away to the one he wants to chop. Should he go to another tree? But Wiley thought, oh, this one's close enough. Kind of, sort of, or whatever. <laughs> Wiley. Start chopping at the tree. <laughs> Just then you heard the dogs going, ar, 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 ar. That meant that they smelled the hairy man. Wiley put down the axe, went to untie the dogs, but uh, the hairy man, yeah. And they couldn't get, the dogs couldn't get at the hairy man because of the ropes, so they were going like this. Well, they looked at the hairy man, he said, see you later, <laughs> and he climbed back up the... <laughs> hey, hairy man, I hear you're a conjurer, you can do magic. Well, no one can do magic as good as my mom. No one can do magic as good as me. Wiley said, I'd love to see you do some magic. I'd love... I'd love to see you turn yourself into something tall, like a giraffe. <coughs> I can do that. The hairy man twisted himself around, stretched out his arms and his legs and his neck until he became a tall giraffe, so tall he could stare at Wiley in the top of the tree. He turned his head and his neck, and he looked at Wiley and said, <laughs> What do you think of that, Wiley? <laughs> Wiley said, Oh, that's pretty good, hairy man. But can you turn yourself into something small, like a mouse? I could do that. <laughs> he flipped himself over, scrunched himself up, and he became a little mouse. Wiley jumped out of the tree, picked up that mouse by the tail, put him in a sack, the croaker sack, tied up that sack real good and tight, ran over to the river, and threw it in the river. He was done with the uh, hairy man. He turned around to go back to the tree, and uh, there was a hairy man. And Wiley said, hey, ma, ta, ta. <laughs> How'd you get out of the sack? He said, Wiley, I can turn myself into anything. So I turned myself into the wind. And I blew myself out of the sack. Wiley said, oh, that's pretty good, hairy man. See you later. And he ran past the hairy man and climbed back up the tree. Hey, hairy man. If you could turn yourself into something like the wind that we can't see, does that mean you can actually make things disappear? Like, I bet you, bet you can't make my shirt disappear. I can do that. Wiley's shirt disappeared. And he snapped one finger. Everyone snapped one finger. And Wiley's shirt dis uh, And he was cold. <laughs> okay, Harry, man, you made my shirt disappear, which means you could probably make the rope that's holding up my pants disappear but I bet you can't make all the rope and all the world disappear. I can do that. All the rope and all the world disappear. He snapped two fingers, everyone snapped two fingers, and the rope that was holding up while his pants disappeared and his pants fell down. <laughs> but what other rope disappeared? The dog dog went out. And the dogs went, ar, 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 right up to the hairy man. The hairy man went, whoa, and he hightailed in the woods. Wally jumped out from the tree, ran home, and he told his mother everything that happened. Oh, my mom's that's going, oh, no, no, no. I said, we could do this. Oh, we could do that. I said, we could do that. I just got to turn a little boo. Ben fell down and ran away home. <laughs> his mom said, that's wonderful. You tricked the hairy man two times. All you got to do is trick him. But Wiley, this time he's going to be mad. He's not going to wait for you this time. He's going to come here. So you better leave it to... Me. Wiley finally learned to listen to his mom. mom. And you know what? It doesn't matter how old we get. We have to find those people in our lives who we should listen to, that are always pointing us in the right direction. And for Wiley, it was his mom. mom. He said, what do you want me to do, mom? She said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go in the barn. I want you to get a baby suckling pig. I want you to get that pig. I want you to go upstairs. I want you to put it in your bed. 
I want you to cover it with a blanket, then I want you to go down to the cellar and wait for me. Now, it sounded strange to Wiley, but his mother had always pointed him into the right direction, so she must be up to something good. So Wiley went into the barn. He got a little baby pig, went upstairs, put it in his, covered with a blanket, went down to the cellar. And who do you think came to the house that night? Batman. Yeah. Now, for this knock, I need a big boom, boom sound when my fist hits the door, and we want all of Berkeley to hear us. Are you ready? Here we go. Get ready. Oh, we're not there yet. <laughs> you got the idea, though. Now, if I heard a sound like that, I'd be frightened. But Wiley's mother, she had a wonderful trait. She wasn't afraid of. She knew fear is just in your head. Evening, Harry Man. Evening, Wiley's mom. That was her name. <laughs> Evening, Wiley's mom. I've come here for your baby, she said. You can't have my baby. <laughs> you don't give me your baby, I'm going to turn your house into toothpicks. She said, OK, OK, you can have my baby. He's up in his bed. And the hairy man walked up the stairs. <laughs> Pulled back the blanket. That ain't your baby boy, Wiley. That's a baby pig. She said, you didn't ask for my baby boy, Wiley. You asked for my baby. And that baby pig has been with me since it was born. So it's like a baby to me, too. So I suggest you take that baby of mine and get on out of here. The hairy man had been tricked for the third time. He grabbed a hold of that baby pig. He ran out the door. And you know what? He's never been seen again. And that's the story of Wiley and the hairy man. The last story I tell is Tailybone. Now, Tailybone is a scary story. I generally don't tell this story to children who are in third grade or under because the story might be a little too scary for them. Now, on this video, I tell it in a very funny way and not as scary as I usually tell it. But I still recommend that if you are not in fourth grade yet, that you please pause or turn off the DVD and check with your parents first to see if it's okay to watch it. Thanks. One beautiful day, I hiked up a tall mountain called Mount Diablo in Northern California. As I neared the top, I came to a clearing where there were remnants of a burned down house. I stayed in that spot for hours, wondering to myself, who had lived here? As it grew dark, I started to hike back to where I'd parked my car. So I started to hike down the trail, back to where my car was. And when I got there, there was a ranger there. And he had a, a truck just like this color. And uh, I saw the ranger. I said, hey, you know what? I came to this clearing on that trail. And, and there was this looked like a house there. What's that all about? And the ranger said, uh, don't you know about tailybone? And I go, tailybone? <laughs> and he said, yeah, that's what he said. He goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to hear a story? And I said, yeah, man, I want to hear a story. I'm a storyteller. And he says, sit down. And so he told me this story I'm going to tell you right now. You see, that clearing I came to was a house. And there was a fur trapper that lived there. And he lived out there, you know, out on Mount Diablo. And what he would do, yeah, he would do this. He would take traps. He was a fur trapper, so he'd catch animals. And when he'd catch the animals, he'd kill them, skin them, eat the meat and then sell the furs in town. Well, this was 100 years ago, all right? This was back in 1910. And he took all the skins, and what he would do is load them onto the back of the horse. And when he'd load the skins onto the back of the horse, he'd then get on the horse and ride into town. And he'd sell the skins and furs to make money to buy things he needed. Well, this one day, he loaded the skins and furs onto the back of the horse, got onto the back of the horse, 
just about to write off when it started to <coughs> snow. That'll happen out there every now and then. And what year did I tell you this was happening in? 1910. Now, it was January of 1910. And there was a cold front that went through all of California. It was called the Storm of 1910. And it got so cold that it was snowing in places it normally wouldn't. Even snow down here in Berkeley. Hail out on the beach. And so he's there, and he goes, at first, what a pretty snow. And then he was about to ride into town when it started to snow harder and then harder. And soon it was snowing so hard he couldn't see his hand in front of his face. He said, well, I can't even see my hand in front of my face. <laughs> well, if I can't see my hand in front of my face, I might get lost. And if I get lost, I might freeze. And if I freeze, I might die. So he got off the horse, unloaded the skins and furs, put the horse back into the barn, and he waited for it to stop snowing, but it just kept snowing. So that day, the day after that, well, he was going into town for a reason. He had run out of meat and bread and vegetables and fruit. But he was a pretty smart guy. He kept bags and bags of dried beans around his house. Now, if you keep dried beans around, as long as you keep the bugs out of them, they'll last for a long time. You just cook them in water, you boil them up, and you got protein. But the problem was all he had were bags of beans. He had no salt, no pepper, no salsa, no tortillas, no nothing to make the beans taste good. So he would put the beans in and have beans for breakfast, plain old beans for for dinner he'd have. Oh, but sometimes for dessert, he'd have beans. He was so sick of eating beans. So it's one night he's stirring up another pot of beans. When he heard a sound, it was a scratching sound. And it was coming from underneath a floor just like this floor, but not as beautiful as this floor. It was a wood floor. And because of the weather, it, there was a hole between two floorboards. And the hole went all the way down to the ground. And coming up from underneath the hole was a hand or a claw or something. And then up came another one. And this thing pulled itself up from underneath the floor, hopped on the floor, and it was this big rat-like thing with this long, scaly tail with like four hairs on it. And for the eyes, it didn't have any eyeballs. All that were the eye sockets. And that's exactly what he said. He said, ew. <laughs> and the thing started to crawl towards him. He said, oh, go on, get away from me. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> oh, that ain't right. <laughs> oh. Then he bumped up next to this pile of firewood. And on the top of that pile of firewood was an ax. I said, go get away from me. Now, the thing didn't have eyeballs, so it couldn't see him. But it must have heard the tone in his voice because it turned around and started to crawl back towards that hole in the floor. He said, go on, get away from me. Get back down there. Well, I'm just going to chop you up anyhow. And he raised the axe above his head, and he chopped at it. Now, the thing must have heard the swishing of the axe because it jumped up into the air, went back to the hole in the floor. But when the man brought down the axe, he chopped off the thing's tail and it was flopping on the floor like this. He had a long poker stick, and he poked at the tail. <laughs> it wiggled on its own. <laughs> so he poked at it again. <laughs> well, he was so bored, stuck up in that cabin. You know what he did? No, he poked at it for an hour. <laughs> Eat it. That's disgusting. But you know what? You know what happened, though? He did start thinking. He looked at it, and he said, well, you know what? My beans, they don't have any flavor. <laughs> and, and, you know, have you ever had chili and beans before? Well, it's the meat that makes the beans taste better. So he took out his poker stick, and he stuck it into the tail. Picked up the tail, and he dropped it in the pot of beans. He stirred up the pot of beans, and it went like this. Just sank down to the bottom of the pot. Now, he wasn't going to eat the tail, because that is disgusting. <laughs> but what he wanted to do was have the tail give the beans some 
flavor. Yeah, because he didn't have any salt, no pepper and everything. Ooh, he could smell that tail was cooking. There was a meaty smell. And he scooped out some beans from the top. He put it in a bowl. He tasted them. Yeah, tastes better. <laughs> kind, of, kind of a meaty flavor. But that flavor of meat made him want to eat meat that much more. And he wasn't getting full from eating just beans. You knew it. Yes! He took out that ladle, he dipped it low in the pot, and he pulled out the... He blew on it, and he... Not yucky. Crunchy. <laughs> and you know what? What everybody says is true. Everything does taste like chicken, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> One of the hairs. Now he was. He pulled the feather tick up over and was just about to fall to sleep when he heard something outside. It went like this. It went, oh, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> he pulled the feather, tick up over him. He thought it was just the wind, but sure enough, he heard it again. It was definitely a voice, and it went like this. It went, Taliban. Taliban. I want my... Taylor Bone. I said, I don't know what that is, but then he heard it again. Taylor Bone. Taylor Bone. I want my. Taylor Bone. Taylor Bone. Man said, I don't know what that thing is, but I'm going to get my dogs after it. And he had these three dogs, great hunting dogs. First dog was named Pretty Good. Second dog was named Not Bad. Third dog was named That's the Best. He said, OK, dogs, I want you to go get that thing. And the dogs were like this. Arr, arr, arr. He opened up the door, he said, go get it. And the dogs went, arr, 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 arr. My dog's gonna get that thing. <laughs> he pulled the feather tick up over and was just about to fall to sleep again when he heard that voice again. But this time it was going like this. It was going. Oh, oh that's pretty good. Good up you. Mmm. That's not bad. Uh, uh, uh. That's the best. And he heard the voice again. Taliban. Taliban. I want my. Taliban. And the man said, I ain't got your Taliban. outside my door. <gasps> this time I'm going to get it with my axe, but I'm not going to just chop off its tail. <laughs> and he opened the door. <laughs> there was nothing there. <laughs> it had stopped snowing. The sky was clear. The stars were out. It was cold. He looked over to the left. There was nothing there. He looked over to the right. Oh, and he jumped on him. And it tore him to pieces. Now, the ranger told me that story. And when he finished it, I went like this. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, that ranger told me that story, and I decided I was going to tell that to my friend. So I went over to my friend Collins. He lives nearby. And I went to Collins' house, and I said, hey, Colin, let's go hiking tonight. I got a really cool place to go to. Bring the tent. I got a story to tell you. So we brought the tent. We set it up in that old house. And I told Colin the story of Taylor Bone. And the wind was blowing that night. And it was going like this. And even though we were in our 30s at that time, grown men, we were going like this. Because every now and then we hear a twig break. And we go, oh, man, what was that, Taylor Bone? <laughs> and then we heard something on the wind. And it was coming from this direction of the Bay Area. Because I wet my finger and I could feel the wind. And it was going like this. It was going. 
テレボーンテレボーン I got my Telebon. <laughs> And you know what? This story is so frightening because it's absolutely not true. <laughs> And that's the story of Telebon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. See you outside in the foyer. Imagine if we live. 